Hey, I'm RC and welcome to the third episode about creating games in HTML5. So if you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in the last episode, this is what we have managed to create. So we got our box, our Canva. We got two letters that bounce around independently. And this is the code for it. So long story short, we got two entities. We got our player, we got our enemy, and we got a function called update that is called every frame. And inside this, we do the logic for updating the position and drawing the player. So one issue we have in our code right now is that if we want to add a new enemy, we need to practically double our code. We would need to double to copy that and also copy all of this, which is not good. When you code, you want to keep the, the code as little as possible. And to do that, we will need to do two things. The first one is to convert um, our variables into objects. So object is a very important part in JavaScript. JavaScript is an object oriented language and this means that most of the time you're going to use object, but don't worry in this video, we'll keep it very simple. It's a complex topic, but for this video, we'll assume that an object is simply a group of variable. And when a variable is inside a group, inside an object, then it's called an attribute. So now let's take a look at our enemy. So right now our enemy is five variables, but there is absolutely no link between them. So for the browser, there is no relationship between enemy X and enemy Y and enemy speed X. So what we will do is to group those five variables under one variable that will be an object that will contain those five variables. So in order to do that, what we will do is to um, put this, so var enemy, so this is the name of our object, and then two brackets. And this means that this tells the browser, A, hey, we want to create a variable that will be an object, and the name of the object is enemy. Then after that, you can add um, attributes into it with this syntax. So it's the name of the variable dot the key which is the name of the sub variable and then the value of the sub variable. So now the enemy X is 150 and we can access the value by simply writing down enemy X. So this, if we say if, for example, if this equals 150, this will return through as this will be converted to 150. So we can add the X, we can add the other ones too. So this right there would be kind of the equivalent of this. There is also another syntax um, when dealing with objects and creating them, it's this right there. So those two are exactly equivalent. Right there we say create a empty object and then we add the property, the attributes after. And here what we do is we create an object that already has the property x, speed x, y, speed y and name. So those two are entirely equivalent. And another way to access a property, like I mentioned, you can access the property um, by simply writing down enemy x. But another thing that is entirely equivalent is enemy x and x being a string inside brackets. So those two are exactly the same. And another way to do it is to create a string variable. Let's say my string is equal to x. It's a string and then we do enemy my string. So what will happen is that my string will be converted into x and this will be converted to 150. So now let's just do the change everywhere. So we have already done our enemy but we will also do it for the player. Um, so just copy paste place it here, um, call it player, we got player x, player speed. And as you can see, the attribute can have the same name and not overwrite each other as long as the name of the object, the main object is different. So even though we got x here and x here, they don't overwrite each other because player is different than enemy. So there we go. Then right here, we need to change it for player X. Um, player, player, player. It shouldn't be too long. And right here, we simply need to change the underscore for a dot. <laughs> uh, we are so lucky, so lucky. 
and it's so simple. It was not at all intended, of course. Okay, so there we go. So now if we save and we check on Google Chrome, it should be exactly the same than before. So now as usual, just open Google Chrome and drag your um, HTML file into a new page and there you have it, exactly the same behavior than before. So now you're probably wondering, why have we done that? There's just no point. There's still the same amount of lines in our code and if we want to add the enemy, it will still double our code. But don't worry, um, just wait a little bit more. You will see how amazing this new structure is. So what I will do now is to split our update function. So right now how it goes is that our update function update the player and then update the enemy. It does two jobs. And normally you don't want to have one big function that does everything. You want to split big function into smaller function. So what we will do is create a new function that we will call update player. And what it will do is that it will update the player. Easy as that. And then we will create another function that we will call update enemy. That will update the enemy. Pretty straightforward. And our update function, what it will do instead of calling this directly is that it will call update player. And then after that, it will call update enemy. So what will go is um, what will happen is that after 40 milliseconds, the browser will call the function update. It will go here, it will say, hey, I need to call the function update player. It will go here, do this code, then it will come back where um, update player was called and it will do the next line. So update enemy, it will go here, update the enemy, and then it will reach the end of the function. So the two, um, what we had before and what we have now is exactly the same except the structure. So for the next improvement, I will need to introduce a new type of function. So, so far, all the functions we have created actually do something. So for example, update calls those two function. This function update the uh, enemy position and draws it. The update player do a bunch of stuff. But there is another type of function. It's function that do nothing but return a value. So it's very used in um, maths, for example. So in math, you have something like fx equal x times 2. So for those who have done maths, they have probably seen um, something like this before. Well, this is exactly the same than this. Return with the keyword return. So if a function has the, um, the word return, then when you call it, for example, f2, the 2 will go here and be re will replace the x. So it will become return two times two and this thing will become four. So if you call this, it will be equal to four. If we call this, it will be equal to 20. And another way to do it is something like this. So if we have a variable, which is 15 and we call f, um, f of number, this right here will be transformed into a 15. We'll go here, the x will be transformed into a 15, 15. This will become 30, 30, and this will be transformed into 30. So one very important thing to understand is that there is no relationship between um, the name of the variable that you put as a parameter. So this is a parameter, the first parameter of the s function. So there is no link between my number and the x. So this could be y and the function will still work. This could be anything at all. It will still work. There is no relationship between those two names. So how it works is that the browser takes whatever you put as the first parameter, for example, my number, it does not know what it is. All he knows is that it takes the first parameter, multiply it by two and then return it. It can work, it can fail, the browser does not know. And we will use this in order to improve our code. So like you might already have noticed, um, our function update player and update enemy is entirely similar except for one thing. Right here, the variable, the object is named player and here the object is named enemy. And there is a way to mix the two and it's by using parameters. So what we will do now is create a new function that we will call update um, entity, entity, and this function will take a parameter. So it will be the parameter 
it will be something. The browser does not know what it is, but all it knows is that it will take the something and it will take the value x of something and then add, increase it by the something dot speed x. And obviously when we will um, call this function, let's just update this like that. So for example, when we call the function update, update enemy, if we change it for update entity with enemy as a parameter, our variable enemy, so what it will do is update entity, we go here, something gets transformed into enemy, and everywhere there's something, it will be transformed into enemy. So it's exactly the same function than update enemy, except um, that um, it takes the enemy is passed as a parameter instead of being hard coded into the code. And as you can probably tell, we can also do this with the player. So instead of calling update player, we can simply call update entity player. So we can remove this and this. So now if we want to add a new enemy, it's a lot quicker. We just copy paste this, put two, and then right here, we just add update entity enemy two. We didn't add to copy paste this part because this part is really flexible. It takes, whoops, it takes anything as a parameter and it will apply the logic. So a lot quicker, but obviously if we wanted to have, let's say 1000 enemies, then it would be really um, messy because we would need to copy this 1000 time. Um, fortunately, there is a way, a faster way to do this, and it's by using list. So listing the enemies using loop for. So we'll cover that in the next episode. So if you want to watch it, uh, watch it. You can simply click the annotation on the screen. And if you want to bring your JavaScript skills to a whole new level, you can take a look at my tutorial about creating quests for Raining Chain, which is an open source MMORPG. It's very easy um, to understand. And you can simply click the annotation on the screen if you want to check it out. You can also play it at rainingchain.com. So it would be really appreciated if you would give it a look. And thanks again for watching. See ya.